Summary of Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds Will tells the reader who he is and swears that his story is true, but he doesn't mind if the reader doesn't believe him. He asks the reader to call him Will, which is what everyone else does. His mother is the only one who calls him William. His brother Sean used to call him William when he was trying to be funny, but Sean was killed last night. Will says that it hurts horribly to see a loved one's blood outside of their body, no matter what he and the reader have in common. Will is sad and confused about Sean's death, but he isn't really shocked. Will and his friend Tony are outside when it happens, thinking if they'll get bigger now that they're 15 years old. They drop to the ground when they hear gunshots, as they should. When they get up, Will sees that Sean is no longer alive. He was killed when he went to get special soap for their mother's acne. Letitia, who is dating Sean, kisses him and screams while Will and Sean's mother moan. When the cops show up, a young officer seems to be expecting answers, but Will says that when someone dies in his area, everyone acts like they can't see or hear. The cops put up yellow tape, put Sean in a body bag, and took him away. Will says that beef gets passed around in his area. It never helps, and Sean died because of it. Will's mother cries in their eighth-floor apartment while Will hides in his room. The rules of the area say that he shouldn't cry, so he tries hard not to. The other two rules are that you can't tell on anyone and you should always get payback. This means that if a loved one is killed, you have to kill the person who did it. The rules can't be broken by anyone. Will talks about the room he and Sean shared. Will's part is messy, but Sean's is clean. The only thing wrong with Sean's side is that his gun is in the middle drawer of his desk. Sean wasn't a perfect person, and their mother stopped trying to control him once he turned 18. But he was Will's favorite brother and the only one he had. When Will turned 13, he let him use his perfume. Will looks in the middle drawer for the gun the morning after Sean's death. It feels about as heavy as a baby, and Will knows that with it, he can follow rule number three and catch Carlson Riggs, an old friend of Sean's who he thinks killed Sean. Will explains why he thinks Riggs killed Sean. Riggs was in a gang called the Dark Sons, and the shop where Sean had to buy the special soap was in their area. Will also knows that Riggs did it because he has seen a lot of crime shows and has learned how to spot bad guys. The next morning, Will takes the gun out and, as he holds it, he feels close to Sean. Will puts the gun in the back of the band around his waist. He plans to get to Riggs's place early so that he can do it. He sneaks past his mother and out of the flat. He calls the elevator and hits the L button. A man gets on the elevator on the seventh floor and checks to see if the L button is lit up. Will remembers that he and Sean used to joke that L meant that anyone going to the hallway was a loser, and Will thinks that he's already chosen to be a loser. The man starts to look strangely at Will. Finally, he turns around and shows Will his t-shirt. On it, there is a picture of the man and a text that says, in memory of myself, which is a reference to his own death. The man's name is Buck, and everyone thought he was dead. Will tries to get out of what he thinks is a dream and thinks about whether or not he should be scared. After the boy's father Pop died, Sean looked up to Buck. Will wonders if Buck came to steal his breath, but Buck says he came to check on his gun. Will tries to act tough and listens to Buck explain that he gave the gun to Sean and told Sean to keep it away from Will. Will says that he found it anyway and that he needs it to get revenge for Sean's death and follow the rules, just like Buck would have done. When Will complains about how slow the elevator is, Buck jokes that it's a long way down and laughs when Will says he has work to do. Buck says that Will doesn't have what it takes and asks if he has made sure the gun is loaded. Will almost shoots himself when he tries to check, so Buck takes the gun and says it has 15 bullets. There should be 16 of them. The lift stops when Buck lights up a cigarette. A beautiful young woman walks in on the sixth floor. Will wants to look at her, but the gun pokes him in the back, making him wince. The girl tells Buck off for smoking in the lift, and then she asks Will why he has a gun. Will is worried because the girl can see Buck's ghost and knows he has a gun. 
Will says he won't talk to a stranger about this because he's trying to act cool, but the girl says she's not a stranger because she's known Will for a long time. She opens her purse and shows Will a picture of him and his friend Danny on the day Danny died when they were both eight years old. He sees that the girl in front of him is Danny's ghost, and he says that the day in the picture was both the best and worst day of his life. Someone started shooting around them while they were playing on the playground. Will watched Danny get shot and die while Sean tried to protect them from the bullets. All night long, Will cried. The next morning, Sean showed him rule one, don't cry. Will wanted to punch something when he tried to follow it. Now, in the lift, Danny asks Will again why he needs the gun. Will tells her that he's going after Riggs. So Danny doesn't think he's being mean for no reason, he tells her the rules. Will says he won't miss when she asks what will happen if he does. Then, Danny takes a cigarette from Buck, who lights it just as the elevator stops. Will feels trapped by the cigarette smoke, and he thinks that whoever is waiting to get on won't get in this crowded, smoke-filled elevator. Big hands reach into the lift, though, and grab Will by the neck. Will screams, jumps back, and grabs his gun. He sees that the hands belong to Uncle Mark's ghost, who he knows from the many pictures of Mark that are all over Will's house. Uncle Mark is very tall and always looks great, and he tells Will, with a tear in his eye, that he looks just like Pop. Uncle Mark wanted to be a movie director and wanted to make a movie about Pop and Will's parents' love. When Will asks Uncle Mark why he is there, Uncle Mark slowly asks Will the same question and then pushes him to answer in a threatening way. Will says he's doing what Uncle Mark would have done and following the rules. Uncle Mark talks Will through the scene of Riggs's death, but when it comes time for Will to pull the gun, Will has trouble saying it. Will tells the reader that Uncle Mark died after he lost his video camera and started selling drugs to get money for a new one. It made him money for a few months, but then a child killed him. Uncle Mark asks Will what happens after he shoots, but Will says that's the end. Uncle Mark lights up a cigarette, laughs, and says, that's never the end. The lift stops once more. On the fourth floor, the ghost of Pop walks in and gives Will a hug right away. Will was only three years old when Pop died, so he doesn't remember anything about him. His mother said that Pop died of a broken heart after Uncle Mark died, but Sean said that he died at a payphone after killing the person who killed Uncle Mark. At that time, Buck, who was 16 at the time, took Sean under his wing. Pop and Will start talking to each other in the lift. Will wants to tell Pop everything, but he doesn't because he doesn't want the other ghosts to think he's weak. He promises not to cry, and when Pop asks him what he should do, Will says he should do what Pop did and follow the rules. Pop is worried about this, so he asks Will if he has ever heard him tell a story. Pop says that when Uncle Mark died, he was broken, so he did what the rules said. He killed the person he thought had killed Uncle Mark, but that night he couldn't sleep or touch his wife, Will, or Sean. Will says that Pop just did what he was supposed to do, but Pop says that's not true, he killed the wrong guy, even though he thought he had the right man. Will is upset that his father isn't the man he thought he was after hearing this. He also wonders if he's letting Pop down at the moment. Pop moves closer and gives Will another hug. Will is both confused and relieved until Pop grabs Will's gun and puts it to his head. Will screams for help, but nobody can hear him because of the smoke. Pop takes the gun away and gives it back to Will after Will wets himself out of fear. Uncle Mark gives Pop a cigarette and when Pop lights it, Buck stops the lift. Will thinks the stranger must be living in real because he doesn't say anything to anyone when he gets on. Buck, on the other hand, walks up to the man and shows him the back of his t-shirt. They hug happily, and Buck tells the man that he was the one who killed him. Will is surprised, and he is even more surprised when Buck asks if Sean has ever told him this story. Will thinks Sean didn't do it, but he remembers Sean saying that he knew who killed Buck and seeing Sean load his gun. Buck says that he was at the basketball court with Sean one day. Sean was talking about an old friend who is now a dark son and who tried to get Sean to stop buying the special soap for his mother in Dark Sun's area. 
Sean was talking about Riggs, and Will knows that. Buck says that while they were talking, he tried to show Sean a gold chain that he had just stolen from a kid from the suburbs. Sean left the floor after he gave Sean the chain to cheer him up. Will explains how to become a dark sun, you have to get a cigarette burn under your right eye, live nine blocks from Will's building, and do a dark deed, which can be robbing, hitting, or killing someone. Frick speaks up and says that his dark deed was to rob Buck, but when he went up to Buck, Buck just laughed at him. When Buck then hit Frick, Frick got scared and shot him. Will asks what this has to do with Sean, and Frick says that Sean did the right thing by following the rules. He pulls down his shirt to show a red bullet hole, and Buck tells him that Sean found out who Frick was from Tony, who spends all day at the basketball court talking about everything to make himself seem cool. Buck asks Will how he knows that Riggs killed Sean. Will says it makes sense, Riggs killed Frick because he was wronged. Frick, on the other hand, has no idea who Riggs is. The lift stops while he lights his own cigarette. When the elevator doors open, no one is there. Will is getting antsy, and the elevator is starting to feel like a cage to him. When the doors are almost shut, someone stops them with their fingers. The doors open again, and Sean is there wearing the bloody clothes he died in. Sean walks in, meets the other ghosts kindly, and then turns around to face Will. Will gives Sean a hug, but Sean just stands there. Will tells Sean everything and says that he is trying to kill Riggs in order to follow the rules. He tells Sean that he's scared and wants to know if what he's doing is right. Sean's tears come out. Will tells Sean that the first rule is that they can't cry, and he looks away so that Sean doesn't start crying. But Will sees that Sean's tears don't make him love him less. Sean is still Will's best and only brother, even though he's sad. When the elevator gets to the entrance, Sean makes a painful grinding sound. When the doors open, all the ghosts follow the smoke out. Will is scared, wet, and crying as he stands in the lift. Sean goes back and asks Will, are you coming? About the author. Reynolds grew up in Oxon Hill, Maryland, a rural neighborhood of Washington, D.C. When Reynolds was a young student, he didn't like what his teachers made him read because he couldn't relate to the characters or get interested in books that didn't seem to have much to do with his life. He didn't read a book until he was 17 because of this. Reynolds became interested in writing and poetry because of Queen Latifah's record Black Rain when he was a kid and Richard Wright's book Black Boy when he was a teenager. Reynolds wrote poems all through high school and college, even though he did poorly in English classes. He was inspired by Queen Latifah. Reynolds's first book, which he wrote with Jason Griffin, was a critical and financial failure, so he got a job managing a rag and bone shop and thought about giving up writing. But a friend told Reynolds that he should write in his own style. When I was the greatest is what came out of it. Reynolds has written several other books for young adults since then. Most of them are about young black people who live in areas like the one where he grew up. His goal is to help improve reading rates and, in particular, to help book haters become readers by writing books that he would have liked as a young person. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.